live NFL trivia every Wednesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge for a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. The Cardinals have had a lot of quarterbacks in their franchise's history spanning close to 125 years. And while you have guys like Neil Lomax, Charlie Johnson, and Kurt Warner who had very good careers with the team, when you ask most people, especially those around at the time, who the greatest quarterback in the history of the franchise is, odds are, they'll point to this man right here. This is Jim Hart, and he played 18 years of his 19-year career with the St. Louis Cardinals. Pick a random game that the Cards played at Busch Stadium, and it's more likely than not that Hart was the one starting it. Hart threw 209 touchdown passes in his career with the Cardinals. By the time his time in St. Louis came to an end, he was 10th all-time in NFL history in this category. However, of all those 209 touchdowns, none were as shocking and as surprising as this one. In a 1978 game against the Philadelphia Eagles, he was so badly injured that nobody whatsoever thought he was even going to suit up, let alone play. And then, he threw the game-winning touchdown against all odds. This is the story behind the most surprising touchdown of Jim Hart's storied career. Before I talk about the touchdown in the game in question, we need some context to understand just who Jim Hart is, and what he and his team were going through, because it makes the moment all the more surprising. First off, the fact that Hart was in the NFL in 1978 was somewhat of a miracle in itself, because I'm not sure anyone expected when the Cardinals signed him in 1966 that he was going to have the career that he did. The only reason the Cardinals signed him was because his college coach at Southern Illinois was now with the team. He was six on the depth chart, with no one expecting anything of him. However, after he crept up the depth chart, by 1967, he jumped all the way up to the number one quarterback after starter Charlie Johnson was called into active duty. The rest, as they say, is history. What followed was a career where, at one point, he was one of the best quarterbacks in football, and was the leader behind one of the most exciting teams in the league to watch. After some solid seasons where he was inside the top 10 in passing yards and passing touchdowns, it was 1974 where things really took off. Under the guidance of head coach Don Coryell, the Cardinals were playing playoff football for the first time since moving to St. Louis, and for the first time in over a quarter century. No, I'm not counting the 1964 playoff bowl. In 1974, Hart made the first Pro Bowl of his career after throwing 20 touchdown passes, which ranked first in the NFC and second in the league, only behind Raiders quarterback Ken Stabler, and after throwing an interception on just 2.1% of his attempts, which was the best percentage in football. For a guy who had a season in the past where he led the league in picks thrown, to have a season where he led the league in this category was incredible. The Cards won the NFC East that season and won it again in 1975 by going 11-3, tying a franchise record at the time for most wins in a season. Amazingly, prior to the 2015 season where they went 13-3, this was tied for the most wins they ever had in franchise history. Once again, Hart was playing well and made it to another Pro Bowl after finishing inside the top five in passing yards and passing touchdowns and after leading the Cardinals on four game-winning drives. He made the Pro Bowl again in 1976 after finishing third in passing yards and passing touchdowns, and followed that up with another Pro Bowl appearance in 1977. In fact, from 1974 to 77, the peak of the Don Coryell years, Hart ranked second in the NFL in passing yards, only behind Hall of Famer and one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, Roger Staubach. The four-time Pro Bowler was one of the best quarterbacks in the league at this point. But in 1978, for both he and his team, things would not exactly start off well. Coriel's relationship with the team had deteriorated heavily by 1977, and despite all the success that he had, especially compared to his predecessors, he would not return to the cards in 1978. In stepped Bud Wilkinson, one of the greatest college football coaches of all time. He coached for 17 years in Oklahoma, winning over 84% of his games, winning 14 conference titles and three national championships, and being inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame in 1969. In every sense of the word, Wilkinson was a legend. The only problem? He hadn't coached at any level since 1963. It had been 15 years since Wilkinson was patrolling the sidelines. However, he was ready to come out of retirement and give the NFL a shot. Completely unrelated to the main subject of the story, but it was kind of a full circle moment for Wilkinson, who supposedly two decades before, in 1958, was accused by then Commissioner Burt Bell of trying to buy the Cardinals and move them to Houston. And now, he was coaching them. It didn't work out well at all at first. Whereas the cards of the mid-70s under Don Coryell were an always exciting team to watch, even to the point where they bumped the Dallas Cowboys off at Thanksgiving for two years, in an experiment gone horribly wrong that the NFL will never try again, in 1978, through the first eight games of the newly expanded 16-game season, they were probably the worst team in football. They were 0-8 and were four back of the next worst team in their division. Barring a miracle, the cards at the midway point have already cemented a last-place finish. 
the once explosive offense was sputtering, scoring just 96 points, which was the worst total in the NFC and the second worst total in the NFL. Only have Homer Rice's Cincinnati Bengals, who had a not so nice 69 points. They had allowed 183 points, which was the worst total in the NFC and the third worst total in the NFL. Only ahead of the Seattle Seahawks at 186 and the Baltimore Colts at 204. And their point differential of minus 87 was the worst total in the NFC and the second worst total in the NFL. Only ahead of the Baltimore Colts at minus 92. The struggles extended to the entire team, including star quarterback Jim Hart. Through the first half of the season, he had thrown just five touchdown passes, never throwing multiple touchdowns in a game. Against Baltimore's anemic defense, which we already established was really bad, he got nothing going, taking four sacks and throwing no touchdowns in one interception. In each of his first five starts, the cards were held to a touchdown or less. He had multiple games where his completion percentage was below 43%. Hart was known for staying upright and getting rid of the ball quickly. Even though he started all 14 games in 1975, he only took six sacks that season. Well, at the start of October 1978, he had a two-game stretch where he went down seven times. Nothing was working for Hart. Whether it was the system or father time catching up to him or something else, no one really knew. However, on October 15th, he suffered an injury that on the surface seemed like it would change everything. In Week 7, the Cardinals faced off against the Cowboys in an NFC East rivalry. And amazingly enough, even though the defending champion Cowboys were entering this game as one of the best teams in football, and the Cardinals were entering the game winless, St. Louis put up a heck of a fight. In the fourth quarter, following a Jim Hart touchdown pass to Wayne Morris, we were all tied up at 21 apiece. And Hart was having one of his best games of the season. He was 17 for 28 with 264 yards, one touchdown, one pick, and a passer rating of 89, which was impressive since the average passer rating in the league that year was 65. However, with one minute to go, this happened. Hart dropped back to pass, left tackle Keith Wartman completely whiffs on the block, and Harvey Martin, the reigning defensive player of the year and co-MVP at Super Bowl 12, comes in for the kill shot. Hart gets drilled on the play, and actually suffered a partial separation of his left shoulder. The thing to know about Hart is that he was an Iron Man. He had played in 65 consecutive games, which was the longest streak in the league amongst active quarterbacks. However, this injury was too much for him to deal with. Hart had to leave the game, with the diagnosis being that he would be out for a minimum of three weeks. And again, that was the minimum. It could have been worse than that, and with the way the card season was going, they easily could have decided that he would miss the rest of the season so he would have more time to recover and be his usual self in 1979. On October 22nd, for the first time since December 16th, 1973, Hart would not be starting under center for the team. When the Cardinals took on the New York Jets and lost 23-10, it was former first-round pick Steve Pizarkowitz who got the call. And on October 29th, with the Cardinals set to take on the Philadelphia Eagles, it was looking like that was going to be the case yet again. It hadn't been three weeks yet. Hart was listed as doubtful on the injury report. In fact, when the Cardinals released their depth chart for the game, Hart wasn't even listed, which shows how badly injured he was. Here's a preview of that Week 9 game that was published on October 29th, the day of the game. The preview says that Pizarkowitz will be the quarterback again. Hart's obviously not playing this one. He's too banged up to go. Which is why it shocked literally everyone when the Cardinals trotted out onto the field, and out came none other than Jim Hart himself. Two weeks ago, Jim Hart suffered a shoulder separation in a game against Dallas. He is expected to be out of action at least three weeks. But the Cardinal quarterback who started 65 straight games prior to the injury will be in today's starting lineup. And with that, we head to Veterans Stadium for this NFC East matchup between the St. Louis Cardinals and the Philadelphia Eagles. Yes, historically, the Cards have had their way with the Eagles. In fact, they entered this game having won eight straight against Philadelphia, sweeping the season series in each of the past four seasons and the Cards had only lost once since the start of the 1972 season. However, this was different. This was an Eagles team that was entering this game as 11-point favorites, was fighting for a playoff spot, and boasted one of the best defenses in all of football. And this was a Cardinals team that was winless, that was completely reeling, that didn't practice or show up to the team facility on Monday or Tuesday because Wilkinson wanted to give his players time to clear their minds and start a brand new season, and that was starting a quarterback with a partially separated shoulder that was never supposed to be playing in the first place. With all that in mind, the Cards somehow won this game. For the first time all season, and for the first time since November 20th, 1977, which was also coincidentally against the Eagles, the Cardinals left the field victorious, taking it 16-10 and snapping a 12-game losing streak dating back to last season. And the reason the Cards were able to do this? This play right here by Jim Hart. In the second quarter, the Eagles were leading 10-6 following a 33-yard pass by Ron Jaworski to eventual Hall of Fame receiver Harold Carmichael. 
With less than two minutes to go in the first half, the Cards were in danger of going into the intermission behind. At that point in the season, the Eagles had won every game they played in where they were tied or leading at the half. Dick Vermeule knew how to hold on to a lead, so this drive was huge. If the Cards were going to have any chance of picking up their first win of the season, it was going to be here. Hart dropped back to throw, and took a shot deep down the field to Dave Steve, their 7th round pick out of Portland State, who had never caught a pass in his NFL career, let alone a touchdown. However, this is a thing of beauty. Hart hits Steve perfectly in stride down the sideline. Anything less, and this ball easily gets picked off or deflected. From there, Steve does the rest and scores on a 55-yard touchdown. And from that point on, the Cardinals held the lead and won the game. Hart didn't have a great game. He had three picks, and his passer rating was 63.2, which was below the league average that year. But to throw for 260 yards, make this throw, and lead your team to victory while nursing a partially separated shoulder in a game that you were never supposed to play in? Nobody saw that coming. After the game, Wilkinson was emotional, and rightfully so. After starting 0-8, and after being out of the game for a decade and a half, he finally had a win under his belt. He teared up in the locker room and said, I've been telling you guys for eight games that I've never been more proud of any group of men. He was proud of his defense, which forced five turnovers and held the Eagles to no points in the second half. He was proud of running back Jim Otis, who scored a touchdown for the fourth straight game when he punched it in from seven yards out in the second quarter. He was proud of his offensive line, which kept Hart upright all day, not allowing a single sack. And he was proud of Hart, who somehow played in this game and threw the game-winning touchdown pass against all odds. The Cardinals would end the season on a hot streak, going 6-2 over the final eight games, and somehow actually not finishing the season last in their division. And Hart would light it up over the second half. In his final seven games, he threw 10 touchdowns, took just six sacks, averaged over 200 yards per game, and had an unbelievable game against the Falcons to close out the year, where he threw for 333 yards and three touchdowns in a 42-21 victory. Hart finished that 1978 season fourth in the league in passes completed, fifth in passing yards, and eighth in passing touchdowns. Which, considering how his season started, and considering the fact that he was nursing a partially separated shoulder, is incredible. And he wound up playing with the Cardinals all the way until 1983, and lasted in the NFL until the age of 40. For an undrafted rookie who was sixth on the depth chart and never had a fighting chance at making the league in the first place, that is quite the career. And yet, of all the accolades that Hart won in his time of professional football, and all the great moments he had, from the two division titles to the countless number of incredible touchdowns to guys like Mel Gray and Jackie Smith, the moment against the Eagles in 1978 might be the pinnacle of them all. He was badly injured. He was never supposed to play. He wasn't even listed on the depth chart all week. Yet he threw a 55-yard touchdown that was an absolute dime that gave his team their first win of the season and that turned the entire 1978 season around. Of all the 209 touchdowns that Hart threw in his career, this had to be the most surprising one of them all. Get your official Jaguar Gator 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, subscribe down below if you haven't already as it helps the channel out a lot, and be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9pm Eastern for your chance to play NFL Trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at jaguar9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters who help you with the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.